All right, let's talk about hash tables and how quadratic probing works. Let's dive right in. So let's recall how we insert key value pairs into a table of size n using the open addressing collision resolution schema. So first we initialize a variable called x to be one, which we're going to increment every time we're unable to find a free slot. Then we compute the key hash, and that's going to be our first index we're going to check. And we're going to loop while we're unable to find a free slot, meaning the table at that index is not equal to null, so it's already occupied. Every time that happens, we're going to offset the key hash using our probing function. Our probing function in our case is going to be a quadratic function. And then we also increment x, and eventually we will find an open slot to insert our key value pair. So what is the idea behind quadratic probing? So quadratic probing is simply probing according to a quadratic formula, or specifically when our probing function looks something like p of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and ab and c are all constants, and we don't want a equal to zero, otherwise we degrade to linear probing. But as we saw in the previous videos, not all quadratic functions are viable because they don't produce a cycle of order n and we might get stuck in an infinite loop. So as it turns out, most randomly selected quadratic probing functions will end up producing a cycle. Here's an example. Suppose we chose our probing function to be p of x equals 2x squared plus 2 the key we wanted to insert hash to four and the current table size was nine, then we would end up with a two cycle. So first time around, we would probe at position zero, we would get four, probe at position one, we get seven, suppose those two entries were full, and then we would end up in a cycle again. So our probing function is only ever able to hit the buckets four and seven, so it makes it impossible to reach all the other buckets, zero, one, two, three, five, six, and eight. So we're stuck in an infinite loop when four and seven are already occupied. This is really, really bad. So, so the question then is, how do we pick a probing function which always works? The answer is there are numerous ways but here are the three most popular ways I have found. So the first way is to select the probing function to be p of x equals x squared, and to keep the table size a prime number greater than three, and make sure our load factor is always kept below one half, or less than or equal to one half. The other one is to say our probing function equals x squared plus x divided by two and make sure the table size is a power of two. And the last and final one says that p of x should be the alternating sign of x squared and keep the table size a prime number where n is congruent to three mod four. For example, we could say that our table size was 23 because that's a prime number and it's congruent to 3 mod 4. So any of these will work, but as you see, they're very specific in how they work and what the table size should be, and that's a common theme in quadratic probing. So we're going to focus on the second one where p of x equals x squared plus x divided by two and the table size is a power of two. All right, suppose we have an initially empty hash table and we want to insert some key value pair and we're using the following quadratic probing function. p of x equals x squared plus x divided by two and the table size is a power of two, so it's eight. And let's select the load factor to be 0.4, therefore the table threshold is going to be three. So just to emphasize that 
the table size must absolutely be a power of two, otherwise this will not work. Okay, so let's insert the first guy. So suppose that uh, k1 hashes to six, then we're going to insert k1 at position six. All right, next k2, suppose k2 is equal to five, then we're going to insert it at five, no collision there. Suppose k3 is then equal to five, then we have a collision, so we need to handle that. Um, so we're going to try probing at offset one, so that brings us to 6. So we probe again, and that brings us to index 0, which is free. So we're going to insert uh, k3 and v3 key value pairs there. Let's insert k4. Oh, but before we can do that, we've reached the table threshold, so we have to resize the table first. Okay, so let's allocate a new block of memory. And let's double the size of the table to keep it a power of 2. So our new table size is 16. The max load factor doesn't change. However, our new threshold is 6. And the probing function doesn't change. So we need to place the entries in the old hash table into the new hash table. So from before, we know that K3 hashed to 5, so we're going to put it at index 5, because we don't have a collision there. Then no element at position 1, 2, 3, or 4, then we go to position 5 and find k2 right there. So we know from before that k2 also hashed to 5, so we're going to try to put at position 5, but there's a hash collision, so we probe 1, and then we get uh, 5 plus 1, uh, equals 6, so at position 6 we're going to insert k2. Now let's try and insert k1. Uh, and we know from before k1 hashed to 6, but we can't put it there because we have a collision. So we're going to probe along. So we're going to put it in position 7. Alright, and that does it for resizing the table. So let's keep going. We still have a few more elements to insert inside our table. So suppose that k4 equals 35,410. So when we mod that by 16, that gives us position 2. So we're going to say k4, v4 at position 2. So we've already seen k3, and we know its hash value is equal to 5. So since k3 is already in our hash table, we're going to be performing an update. So k3 plus the probing function at 0 gives us 5. So let's update value to be v5 instead of v3, which it was before. So suppose that the key k6 hash to uh, minus 6,413. So that hashes to 3 mod 16. So that slot is free, so we're just going to insert it. And the last one, k7, suppose it hashes to 2. Well, we have a collision right there, so let's probe along. So when we probe, our probing function gives us an offset of 1. That's also taken, so probe again. So now we are at position 5, but that's also taken. So keep probing again. So we probe for a fourth time. To get an offset of 6, so that gives us 8, and that slot is free, so we're going to insert that there. Alright, and that's how quadratic probing works in a nutshell. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, and in the next video, we're going to be talking about the double hashing technique. So, thank you for watching, catch you next time.